The struggle stalwart Esop Pahad is being laid to rest in Johannesburg today. He served as minister in the presidency from 1999 until his resignation alongside former president Tabombegi in 2008. Muloko Muloto has been keeping an eye on funeral proceedings for us and he's still uh, at uh, Pahad's home in Emerentia. Muloko, uh, just a short while ago when you and I spoke, the hearse was arriving at the home. Any movement since then? Not much, Masero. We understand that the body is still inside at the home. We also are told uh, that any moment from now, the procession would leave for the cemetery. But let's speak to the Treasurer General of the African National Congress, Dr. Gwen Ramokopa. Ma'am, thank you so much. Your reaction? Um, we are here to uh, pass our condolences to the Pahat family. Uh, it, is, it is a family that has really contributed significantly to the struggle for liberation in our country and also in the early years of uh, democracy to build this hope uh, during the RDP uh, times and, uh, and also um, early when we were really, really pushing to you know, undo all the laws, the structure, uh, political structure. Uh, structural uh, affirmation of apartheid. Uh, so they, they have really been uh, with uh, the country, with our people. So we are here also to say uh, the family's loss is also our loss as a nation. And uh, uh, Comrade uh, Babo Isop Pahat is one of those uh, leaders that uh, have been upright, uh, that have been loyal and dedicated to the end. And uh, we've been with, the, with them, and uh, him in particular, when he was ill. And uh, we are here also to honor uh, his legacy. Uh, we can say that uh, may his soul rest in peace, but uh, we're also here to commit that may his legacy live forever. And we have seen the statement from uh, the President of the Republic, Sir Ramaphosa, who we know is abroad today. Do we know whether, as much as uh, the burial will happen within the 24-hour period. Do we know whether from government's point of view, whether the, 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 the acting president or anyone from uh, cabinet really will be here for the funeral? Um, the acting president, our deputy president, uh, Paul Mashatile, will officiate on behalf of the state. And um, the body and uh, the entourage is about to, or cottage is about to leave home. Uh, for the burial site. And um, the Deputy President Ailen, who is the acting president, uh, will be at uh, the graveyard. You just said now, may the legacy of us, um, Esop Pahat live uh, forever. Somebody who may not uh, know about uh, this legacy, what are the key values there that uh, you really believe he stood for? As I've indicated, he was part of um, the activists, uh, freedom fighters against the apartheid uh, colonial system. And um, the, this is a generation that was prepared uh, to lay down their lives for the freedom uh, that we enjoy today. Uh, the second issue is that uh, early in the democratic era, he was part and parcel of the cadres that we sent to parliament to uh, redress the laws of apartheid uh, that were in parliament. Uh, I think uh, uh, the laws that were repealed and replaced, it was really an intense work. And he worked alongside uh, Nelson Mandela, he worked alongside uh, uh, Tabon Beki, and um, he continued to contribute as a veteran of the African National Congress in the democratic era. Uh, he was a part and parcel of uh, the early establishment, if we remember, of the reconstruction and development program that really uh, laid a basis for the social security net uh, in South Africa uh, that uh, we have built on. All right, ma'am. I want to take this opportunity and talk about the current affairs. I'm sure you are aware that uh, your tripartite alliance partner, uh, Kwasatu, is staging a nationwide protest or march, complaining about a whole lot of things that uh, they say the ANC government is not doing right. One would assume that there's a, there's a, a tripartite secretariat, I would assume, uh, where they have access to you as the leaders of the ANC to voice these issues. Do you really think uh, that this march perhaps, uh, you know, 
is justified? Our democracy respects the rights of everyone. It affirms the rights of everyone. And um, for us, we need to appreciate that uh, if the workers are unhappy, they use their constitutional rights to raise these matters. But uh, our meetings are continuous as a tripartite uh, alliance. And um, we are also busy with bilaterals, uh, and um, we have uh, also given that feedback through the Secretary General. And we will continue strengthening this alliance because it's an alliance for building a better South Africa and a better world. Yeah, and lastly, they complain. Uh, all right, ma'am, let's, let's uh, allow you to go. Thank you so much, ma'am. We ap appreciate you borrowing us uh, your time. Well, Masero, as you can see, there clearly an indication that uh, the procession would, uh, at any given time from now, leave from here to the cemetery. And you heard from uh, the Treasurer General of the ANC, Dr. Gwen Ramokopa, saying that uh, the Deputy President, who is acting President of the Republic uh, in the absence of uh, President Soro Ramaphosa, who is uh, in the DRC, will officiate in this uh, funeral. I, I, I haven't seen um, the former President uh, um, Tabombeki here, considering that the two really worked uh, together. Um, obviously, he possibly was. Uh, he, he possibly has a reason why he couldn't make it here, because, as you know, this uh, news of uh, perhaps passing was announced this morning, and the burial has to happen within uh, 24 hours. All right, Moloko. So it looks like uh, there is no movement yet, but we'll definitely come back to you as soon as we see uh, any movement uh, at uh, Emerentia. This is outside the home of uh, former minister in the presidency, Esop uh, Pahad. He passed away this morning at the age of 84, in case you missed it. And Moloko was speaking to the Treasurer General of the ANC, the very first one uh, since the ANC's formation, actually. Um, first time that uh, the Liberation Party actually has a female uh, Treasurer General. And these are some of the things that leaders such as uh, uh, Pahad actually raised. Besides the issue around ethnicity, he also spoke uh, uh, quite uh, publicly about uh, equal representation of every uh, ethnic color in South Africa, of, in, of, of any race rather uh, in South Africa, any ethnicity or every ethnicity, as well as the equal representation of women and young people in the ANC. But I see um, uh, with the visuals that Moloko uh, Moloto uh, and uh, his camera colleague Muhammadu Siduki are giving us there uh, outside um, uh, Pahad's home, it looks like uh, there's some sort of formation now outside and some guard that is being formed in preparation of the hearse uh, coming out with his remains. We understand from what uh, Moloko told us a little earlier on is that his remains have been in his home throughout this particular time uh, and uh, um, that uh, uh, he will actually receive a uh, Muslim rights funeral and that uh, a white cloth needed to be covered over him and he needed to be washed in a certain way. But the team's telling me uh, that uh, at the West Park Cemetery uh, in Johannesburg, where his remains will be taken to. We have minister in the presidency as well for women, uh, that is Nkosazana Zamini Zuma. Um, and uh, let's just listen to some of the remarks that she's had about her fallen uh, colleague. His life, we have to remember the times with Isop, Dr. Isop Pahat. So we, ha we have mixed emotions said that we have lost him but also we feel honored that we lived during his time what legacy do you think is he's living there now? he's leaving a legacy of sacrifice commitment activism and fighting for the freedom of this country he leaves a legacy of love because if he didn't love this country, if he didn't love the people of this country, he wouldn't have made those sacrifices. But he also came back and didn't say, I'm done. He continued being active as a member of the NEC of the ANC. He was amongst the first parliamentarians to go into parliament representing the ANC. He was a minister, I think, from 
1996 he became the minister and so he really leaves a big legacy around the struggle for freedom, around freedom and around the creation of a better life for people of South Africa post-apartheid. So that is uh, Minister in the Presidency for Women, uh, Nkosazana Tlamini Suma. She is already at the West Park Cemetery, uh, where the remains of uh, the former minister, Esop Pahad, uh, will be taken to from Emerentia. In fact, let's take you back to Emerentia. Uh, outside his home is where we find my colleague Muloko Muloto. She's been there interviewing the many dignitaries that have been arriving uh, at his home. Muloko, who else has arrived so far? Well, Marcelo, so far, the people that I have seen, it would be your first uh, Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, um, Nomvula Mukonyani. We spoke to her and the Treasurer General, Dr. Gwen Ramokopa, but also the Premier from government's point of view of uh, Gauteng, Banyaza Lisufi, as well as the Secretary of the ANC in uh, Gauteng, Tike Ingliza. But also, I... Um, told oh yes you can see the body is now being loaded onto the the hash and a clear indication that uh, we certainly are proceeding to the cemetery for the funeral of the late Esop Pahat as uh, you have already heard the imam there saying that uh, the burial is being conducted in line with uh, the Muslim funeral rites. It has uh, to happen within 24 hours of uh, his passing. This is certainly the case. And um, indeed, he is uh, now transitioning to the afterlife. And uh, obviously the issue of uh, security as well. We see the JMPD, Metropolis, who are certainly going to be guiding this procession. And considering that this is uh, one of the major streets here in Marentia, very heads off. And um, there definitely will have to be some guidance of uh, some sort to the cemetery. Well, we know that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa is in fact abroad and not in the country uh, at the moment, but he sent out uh, a statement uh, just describing Esop Pahad as, uh, you know, somebody who worked with diligence. Uh, and I understand that uh, um, the Deputy President, uh, Paul Mashatile, is obviously now uh, the President in the interim. Has he uh, arrived there? Well, not yet. And by the look of things, I'm aware that uh, you were playing a bite of uh, the minister in the presidency, Dr. Nkosazana Damini Zuma, there, who is already at the cemetery. The information I have is that the deputy president will go directly to the cemetery, and um, the monas who will live from here will meet up with uh, all the other people on the side of uh, the cemetery. And uh, up to now, yes, the deputy president is certainly not here because uh, we know his um, convoy is quite large. Uh, it would have been that easy to spot him. But yes, as I've been told, he is certainly going to be meeting up with uh, the monas on that other side. Security tightened here. Um, some of them, as you can see, holding big guns. Um, but yes, 24-hour period for the funeral to take place as per the Muslim funeral rites. That has to be observed strictly. And um, it might, uh, for other people who perhaps would have wanted to be here, they may not have that opportunity. As we know that in many instances, uh, we tend to take long, Marcelo, mm -hmm. to bury our loved ones 
uh, there would be memorial services that would be held. In this case, there hasn't been any. And I suppose nothing stops um, those who perhaps might have worked with him, be it in government or in the governing African National Congress or the South African Communist Party, which he also belonged to, to hold a memorial service even after his uh, funeral. But yes, as uh, per the dictates of uh, the Muslim funeral rites, it doesn't uh, give uh, an opportunity for such uh, memorial services and others to take place. These are the members of the Houting Department of Community Safety in their motorbikes going to guide this particular procession to the cemetery. And um, many of them, as I observe, happen to be females, uh, Masero, um, guiding this uh, funeral procession. And Muluko, you know, I want to talk to you about something quite important that uh, people like Esso Pahad actually uh, raised in the ANC and they've been uh, raising this for a number of years. It's the same uh, issue that was raised by your Jesse Duarte, the uh, former uh, uh, Deputy Secretary General of the ANC who also in fact uh, passed away and that is about uh, the equal representation of every race and every ethnic group in the ANC because it keeps boasting about uh, this uh, uh, multiracial party or a party that doesn't uh, discriminate against race but till today we even saw Moloko in terms of the NEC that was elected in December uh, that there is no equal representation of all races in the ANC. Well, I, I suppose that would speak to the history, perhaps, of uh, the, the struggle, the liberation struggle, as well as uh, the African National Congress on itself. But the ANC would tell you that uh, in their constitution, they are a non-racial organization, and uh, they do not stop anyone, perhaps, from joining the party. And um, that obviously will go in as far as uh, what the provision of their constitution says, but in practical terms, somebody would ask as to whether the demographics perhaps reflect that, as you are saying, um, be it uh, in positions of leadership itself, the top uh, seven of the ANC itself, mm. does it reflect the broader demographics? That, that, that's a matter really that perhaps uh, the rank and file, the members of the ANC at the branch level will have to take accountability for because they are the ones who elect the leaders of the governing party. Nomination starts at that level and uh, the gentleman that you see in the car here is the brother of uh, the late Esso Pahat, Mr. Aziz Pahat, who himself once uh, served in the cabinet of the Republic of South Africa and um, he is uh, as far as I understand the younger brother of uh, the late Aesop. The two of them really spent much of their time during uh, exile days in the United Kingdom with uh, the former president of the Republic uh, Tabombeki and um, it was a small wonder really that uh, upon his uh, election as president of the Republic you saw uh, some of the people who were that close to him uh, getting positions in uh, the National Executive uh, Council as uh, ministers. So this is it. They are now leaving for the cemetery for this uh, funeral that uh, must happen in accordance with the Muslim funeral rites. Uh, making sure that uh, he is laid to rest with uh, his uh, people of yore within the 24-hour period. And as I said, this doesn't give uh, many other people an opportunity, perhaps. Uh, but of course, as ENCA, we are carrying this. Perhaps that should be their opportunity to be part of uh, this uh, funeral and see what um, is happening as uh, they are fellow comrade, somebody that they loved, is uh, now being uh, laid to rest.
Uh, and just remind us, Moloko, some of uh, uh, you know the information that was given to you by the imam that you were speaking to a little earlier in terms of uh, Muslim rights when it comes to the funeral, uh, some of the processes that have already taken place and what he said would uh, happen once they arrive at West Park Cemetery. Yeah, well, first it would start in the house where you will have the body being washed. And... Um, Ordinarily, it would be a male Muslim senior who would wash the body in case of a male uh, person who is deceased. But uh, my understanding is that in some instances, some families would even allow the, 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 the partner or the wife or the husband of the deceased to do that. And uh, in this case, at uh, the cemetery, obviously, when they arrive, they still have to observe some of uh, the rituals in line with uh, the Muslim uh, uh, tradition. And importantly, it has to happen within at least the 24-hour period um, so that uh, they do not uh, violate their own uh, practices.